Hi there. So, I wanted to tell you a little bit about just, I, I thought about, you know, Father's Day yesterday and everything. I haven't seen my daddy in about a year and a half, but I was thinking about the way I was raised. I was raised to be an amazing, amazing person. I, I was raised to be strong-willed and kind and, you know, as generous as, you know, my broke ass can afford to be. Uh, my mother raised me with gentility and kindness and tenderness and love and daddy made me a very, very strong character, I'm pretty sure, by trying to kill me many, many times throughout my life. I, I used to think, oh, there was just this one or two couple of incidences, and I, I was thinking about this act and realized, dear God, this guy tried to kill me so many times uh, when I was a baby. Uh, he started with exsanguination, which, if I lost any of you, means he tried to make all of the blood inside my body no longer inside my body. I was in my high chair, and he, he's not the most mechanically inclined person in the world, and he just hadn't quite latched it properly, and so baby me fell, you know, leaned forward and whew, so cracked my entire forehead open, blood everywhere, mom panicking, and daddy sitting there going, she smells delicious. <laughs> Which is something he decided to share with me a few years ago, and I could have died happily without that information, really. Uh, second time, he tried, uh, he tried to suffocate me. I, he, I say this all, by the way, completely in jest. I love my daddy very much. But uh, he, you know, they had all, both my parents had taught me, you know, the dangers of various household implements. And he was emptying out a box and he threw up this plastic bag and it was like American beauty. It just floated through the air, just perfectly open. And I was toddling up behind him. I was maybe two. And it came to rest very, very delicately over my head and face. <laughs> And I ripped it off, and apparently with all the indignation that a two-year-old can summon, I looked at him and said, you nearly killed me. <laughs> uh, let's see, third time he tried to poison me. Uh, I was four or five, we were in a truck stop. Uh, he had a Mexican food plate, and there was a jalapeno on the side of his plate. I love pickles. Always have. And I reached out, and I grabbed it, and I held it up, and uh, two small stories that need to precede this. Um, Daddy used to have a game with me when I was little. Anytime I wasn't eating something that I found offensive on my plate, uh, he would lean forward and say, now, Christina, don't eat that. Square my shoulders, and I would stab whatever you know offensive vegetable it was. I'm like, I'm gonna eat it. No, don't eat that. And I would eat it, and he would win, and I would feel all empowered and shit. <laughs> so he turns around, and I have this jalapeno poised at my lips. He's like, No, Christina, don't eat that. <sighs> Whole thing, one bite. The second story. I have to tell, in addition to this, was that a few minutes before, I had spat something out at the table. And uh, Daddy insists that this was not a parking lot discussion. Do you guys remember parking lot discussions? No witnesses in the parking lot. Those were bad times, but apparently the discussion we did have, which did not involve the parking lot, was severe enough that I was not going to spit this out. All I knew that there was my, you know, I had liquid magma on my tongue and I didn't want to swallow it, wasn't going to spit it, so I just sat there with my face turning darker and darker shades of purple and finally swallowed it and drank my water and daddy's water and Dave's water because five-year-olds don't know about science. I knew fire, water fixes fire. So, yeah. Years later, I was like, oh, oil, milk, got it, bread, okay. Uh, third, fourth, fourth attempt. Actually, these are really the biggest attempts. I'm kind of overshadowing just some minor transgressions. Uh, I was about five, and he sent me into the Gulf of Mexico with nothing but my big brother, who was three years my senior, so an eight-year-old to watch out for me. He was, we were in Galveston, he was standing, like, up on the seawall, and there were stairs down to the beach, and then I was wearing one of those bulky orange life preservers that, you know, you're like, I can't put my arms down, kind of thing. 
And so I float out past where my feet can touch. There are a lot of things that can kill you in the ocean. You know, jellyfish, man of war, sharks, riptides, that guy that you look at him and you think he's wearing a tank top until you notice his nipples. <laughs> Just lots of scary, scary things in the ocean. And so I, um, so I float out past where my feet could touch and I figured, you know, I'm fine. Dave's around, he'll save me. And then my foot brushed something sharp. And when you're five and in the ocean, sharp means exactly one thing, shark. So I started kicking it. I don't know how effective kicking a shark would be, but kicking a reef of coral, counterproductive, my friends. So by the way, again, I'm five. My little five-year-old lungs start screaming and daddy 150 yards away, up on top of the seawall, hears me. So I guess technically that was probably another attempted at exsanguination because I was cut up from about here down. Uh, so waddled to the beach. We drove to, from Galveston to Baytown to get the chunk of coral out of my foot. It was grand. And if I have just a little bit of time left, uh, time that yeah. Daddy tried to kill me, kill me with a speedboat? Yeah! yeah. Yes, speed boat. Okay. <laughs> so... Um, I was either eight or nine or 10. So we're just calling it, call it nine, go Habsies. Summer when I was nine, my daddy had a speed boat. Sorry, my daddy had a speed boat. <laughs> I use the quotes because it would take us out somewhere post haste and then it would die. <laughs> so uh, it's Dave, my older brother again, so he's probably 12 and daddy and me in our speed boat out in the channel that goes up and down uh, around Port Arthur. And the boat dies, and he's like, okay, so daddy grabs this thing. It is a long pole with just this, it, it looks like what a gynecologist would use, would use on a giant. It is a long pole with a pair of duck lips on the end. And it's meant to you know, push yourself along the ground. So daddy pushes us, uh, and, and in fact, because he is my daddy, he starts singing That's Amore because it is amusing to him to pretend to gondolier us in this POS boat. So, so he pushes us over to the seawall and he sets Dave up front of the boat and me in the back. Uh, we are, our job is to hold onto the wall and kind of guide ourselves along, keeping the boat right by the wall. He has Dave, the older one, in the front and the nine-year-old in the back, where the wake is. If any of you don't know what you know, boats do, you know, they send out a wake, which if you're in the middle of a body of water, it just this V that goes out of the boat. If you're by a wall, it pushes. So, nine-year-old little me, and I'm la 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 la, doing my job, and the boat starts to drift a little bit away from the seawall. And I'm not gonna let go because it's my job. My job is to keep this boat by the thing. And, you know, the wall just kind of, and I'm kind of looking at my daddy, trying to see if he can help me, but he's still doing his gondolier thing. He's moved on to some Bobby Darren at the time. <laughs> and I just stretch farther and farther. And, you know, the, the side of the boat just starts sliding down until, like, I, you know, pretend this leg can actually move. I'm like this. My feet are hooked as tight as I can get them along the side. But if any of you know anything about physics, this is not going to end well for a nine-year-old. <laughs> so apparently Daddy is in a break of his song, uh, enough of a break to hear just this little bell tone, little girl's voice go, oh, shit. <laughs> Spoosh! <laughs> so he looks to the rear of the boat, no daughter, blub, 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 blub. So yes, those are, you know, some of the accounts of how my daddy tried to kill me, and fortunately he was not successful. Uh, but, thank you. But I think all in all, it's made me a damn strong person, and I thank him for it. Daddy, I love you. Happy Father's Day.